Alright, welcome back everybody. Anybody that's new here, thanks for joining me today. Uh, hopefully today's video helps make walking on the ice a little bit easier for you guys. Uh, it's not quite winter yet, but now is when you want to be building these things. These, uh, these winter projects, you want to get them done before the end of fall and make it available so you can get out on first ice. Uh, it's the most important thing is being able to get out on ice. And today's video, I'm going to help you figure out how to get that big heavy thing right there. So that's an otter cabin probably loaded up for me when I go out on the ice anywhere between 200 and 300 pounds unless it's first ice and then it's a lot lighter but let's get into how to get it out there much much easier all right there she is the smitty sled uh, I forget why it's called the smitty sled I believe it's because there was a guy that invented it or came up with the idea a long time ago and his name was smitty something smitty if you guys know comment below <laughs> i hate to disrespect anybody but this is definitely not my idea it's just a simple perfected way of doing this um i'm gonna go into describing like close-ups on how to start and like the reasons why you build the thing the way you do and uh the best way to do it quick and easy and cheap okay it's kind of windy out here hopefully you guys can hear me still all right so the first thing you guys are gonna need is uh a pair of skis so two skis and then uh oh one thing it helps to get the length of the skis uh close to if not like about a foot and a half to two feet longer than what you're going to be putting on the smitty sled because uh, the balance uh you want to the back of the smitty sled i'll explain that more when i'm looking at it but uh so like the length of this and the length of my skis so the end of the sled's here the front of the sled's there so the back of the skis stick out about four to six inches but then the front of my skis on that smitty sled stick out like a foot uh maybe a half a foot foot and a half uh in that range because you want your whatever sled you're putting on there or whatever you're putting on your smitty sled um you want it to sit to the back so just keep that in mind when you're getting the like the length of your skis and the thing is is with skis they uh they tend to be in centimeters, I believe, or something like that. So like mine are like a 155 or something like that. Uh, just measure them if you need to and measure this. And then that way you guys can get an understanding. Uh, you don't necessarily need uh, skis that are three feet longer than this, but you can use them. All right, next thing you're gonna do uh, is get yourself a two by six. Um, I think, a I think this was just an eight footer that I had laying around. So you can use scrap wood, uh, eight by six, and then a two by four. So that's all you need. Uh, skis, eight by six, or eight by six, two by six, and two by four. So those are the materials you need. Uh, if you wanna make it really convenient, you do four eye bolts and a piece of rope. Now the rope, I'll get more specific in later on, but you're gonna need about 25 feet to 30 feet of uh, like waterproof waxy rope. Don't get the absorbent stuff. You want something waxy that's not gonna absorb water. <laughs> okay, so after you get all the materials that you need, the first thing you're gonna end up having to do, because a lot of times you're not gonna find skis without bindings on them, is you're gonna have to get the bindings off of them. So take them apart and undo them. Uh, take them off. Uh, I don't have I've had this smitty sled for like six years, so I don't have what I'm talking about, but when you buy skis, you'll see. They have bindings on them, and you got to take those off. Okay, so next thing you need to do is cut your 2x4 so that it is, like, well, you're going to cut your 2x6s down to blocks. Uh, I've seen a lot of people do it this way where they cut the block, and then they cut a wedge from here to here. I didn't do that because you'll see in a minute here the reason I cut this notch out of here is for torsional flex if you don't know what that is I'll explain in a second but uh, you're gonna cut your blocks down uh, long enough that you can countersink a good number of screws in there so that's four deck screws that I use those things are almost I think they're four inches long so they I mean those screws are almost to here probably uh, 
I wanted a good solid platform that wasn't going to break on me and it's obviously worked because I've had this thing for seriously like four to six years and I've used it every year since. Uh, one thing I didn't mention earlier uh, that you got to do next is measure the outsides of your sled. So however wide your sled is, you want to measure the outsides of it and I'm going to tell you why you're going to put these on the outsides in a second and it's as simple as this. When you flip this over, it's inverted, so you have a pocket. So when you put it in the bed of your truck, or wherever, you flip it you flip it over, your sled that you're putting on top of it will now fit inside of it. That's just a storage tip. It gives you extra room. That way you're not, like, you, get, you can usually fit your uh, ice fishing shack inside there with that upside down in your uh, truck with the bed cap on it. So I've done that for years where I have my bed tonneau cover over the top of everything and then everything fits inside there and nobody knows you have it in the bed of your truck. Okay, so I'm going to try and run through this process as fast as I can so this isn't a super long video because this is a really, really simple thing. Almost anybody should be able to do this. Um, so cut your blocks so that you have plenty of room. Uh, I forgot what I did with mine. I think this is four inches on either side with a uh, centered two by four. Um, cut your blocks, uh, countersink your holes down here. So before I even put my screws in, I countersunk these holes with a drill bit, uh, just like a quarter inch, inch and a half. Uh, so they're set underneath so that your screws don't stick out. And that's a big thing. And then I cover these with wax every season, and obviously you can see this; these skis are pretty beat up, but they still do their job. Uh, next thing you're gonna do is, so after you've positioned everything, you're gonna take and notch these out for your two by fours. Uh, I just used a Sawzall actually to get that in there like that. Um, that was the only way I could think of getting it notched out. If there's a better way, I'm sure some of you guys will figure this out, especially if you're do-it-yourself, <laughs> do guys. Um, but, yeah, notch those out so that the 2x4 fits in there. And then uh, the next thing I did was uh, I already had these cut. I, I cut everything to size ahead of time. That was the easiest way to do it. But then I actually countersunk these two right here with a drill bit. So down into this wood so I drilled those out all the way down to probably here that way when you screw these into here after doing this to this it doesn't split your wood if you don't do that it'll split your wood <laughs> and then you have to start all over again uh, big thing is making it so that you're not so in, you know invasive to it and then uh, one thing I did right away off the bat was I drilled these holes in the tips of the skis you want them in the tips of your skis and you'll see the rope comes through the bottom side and not the top because when you're pulling like when you're walking away from this it lifts the ski if you do it the other way around it'll push the ski down in the snow it'd be completely counterproductive there's no reason to build a sled <laughs> so always do that um, and then this is just a big loop I just have it wrapped wrapped around this right now but you can see I have it so that it wraps this and tie it on there stays nice and neat but just a big loop from one to the next uh, that way you can just step inside of it start walking uh, one extra thing that you guys like I said before will want to do is put some eye bolts in and then obviously center them right in there and then that way you can strap stuff down to it uh, just be smart about what you're using for strapping down because I almost broke this the one time <laughs> and that's why I have these third screws going in at a 45 degree angle on each one of these was I put a ratchet strap on here <laughs> and I ratchet strapped it and I forget how hard it pulls and it starts ripping the screws right out of there so I still use a ratchet strap I just strap it down just hard enough though uh, until it's tensioned and I don't go any further than that it be pretty simple. You have the screws countersunk up into there so they fit flush. You have the two holes drilled in the tips of your skis. Uh, just for a reference, like my sled, 
the back of my sled sits right over the back of those and the front of my sled sits right here so that I, I have a very short nubby front end um, I could have probably went like another four or five inches but I built this actually for a different sled it just happens to work for the one that I have now <laughs> so keep that in mind when you're building these things um, one tip I will give you guys if you've made it to this point in the video go to Goodwill secondhand stores or even go to resorts that sell their used rental stuff you can get a pair of skis for like 35 bucks 45 bucks or something like that uh, super cheap or even cheaper than that at secondhand stores uh, but like I said make sure you measure your skis to fit the length of your sled that's going to be sitting on top of there but uh, as I was stating like I was saying here I'll pull on this so when when you're pulling it along it lifts if it's the other way around it won't lift um, you can tie them in like I've seen people tie it in a knot like this around it but what I did is I just double knotted on both sides and it won't pull through I mean it's literally been like that for six years <laughs> and I haven't had any problems with it I uh, probably will this year now that I said something but literally this is as simple as it is center make sure you center these I didn't say that but like center the way they are on there and then obviously like I said give it give it the space it needs and uh, yeah it's pretty simple this little simple thing that anybody can build will save your back a lot of work um, one tip is like don't drag it across cement if you want it to last longer I made it a few times without doing that but then I got stupid and started pulling it over cement and you can see the bottom of the skis now are trashed so I can re-wax them that's the upside is I snowboard and I uh, already know how to wax stuff so I can melt that down and re-wax it every season uh, if you don't know how to do that just look up waxing a snowboard or skis online and they'll give you a good idea how to do it but yeah don't drag it across cement if you want it to last and be really easy to pull across ice and snow all right guys hopefully this little walkthrough and diy build of a smitty sled as simply as you can possibly do it um i wanted to make one uh that was like five six years ago and i didn't have a lot of time i was busy working so much i was working like 90 hour weeks or whatever um and i wanted to be able to get it so i could walk a sled out super easy this is before i ever had any machine or anything i've never had a machine up until last year uh, or the year before that I can't remember I think last year um, So I've been walking my whole life and I'm fine with that I do a lot more walking actually than I do driving my machine around just because I don't trust ice and machines <laughs> As much as I like the idea of things pulling stuff for me I'd rather walk it so I know what I'm walking on and I don't make a mistake and step on something that's not supposed to be crossed but like I said before hopefully this walkthrough uh, kind of get you guys an understanding it's really simple uh, don't overthink it don't try to do a bunch of weird mods uh, if you're not really really handy with stuff um, I'm pretty handy if I wanted to I could make like a permanent one I could probably weld one up I was thinking about doing that I have a buddy that can weld aluminum I was really thinking about having him do that uh, just because an aluminum one would last the rest of my life it'd be super light um, plus I can make it so it's collapsible and stuff like that don't go that route if you guys are first first time builders of a smitty sled literally do it as simple as this buy a set of skis buy one eight foot two by six and one eight foot two by four stud get the cheapest wood you can if you want to you can paint it it will it'll last that much longer as you guys can see i haven't painted that and i've been stepping on it with cleats and kicking it around and dropping it in snow and you name it for five years and it's still doing what it's doing so you don't necessarily have to paint it um but it will last longer and it'll look better obviously um but so skis two by four two by six uh eight footers uh, you'll have extra afterwards but do what you want with it um cut the blocks those blocks i believe if if i'm remembering right are 16 inch blocks on each one um you guys can do whatever you want it's basically you have to customize it to your sled um so whatever you're going to be putting on top of it you have to measure out the length of that and the width of that to figure out how wide it is and like i was saying before i never even thought about it until i did it but when you flip the so it's elevated off the snow um the six inches from the two by six and actually it's five inches or whatever uh because i notch it down and put it in there uh 
when you flip it over inside the bed of your truck, you can actually stick your sled up into the thing if you make it just just a little bit wider than the bottom of your sled. Um, so if you measure the bottom of your sled and it's just a little bit wider, it'll sit on the cross members just fine uh, when you have it right side up. But when you flip it over, it fits inside. So now you're not taking away room when you're going places. If you have a truck and the only way you can haul it is by putting it in there and you want to cover your stuff so your stuff's underneath a cover, uh, tunnel cover or anything like that, a cap. Um, and that's a big thing. Uh, make sure you look at look into the idea of that. And then uh, the second thing is the reason I notch it, because I've seen this mistake made a bunch of times and I've actually seen it fail right in front of me when People are walking out on the ice because they they just ran through it and they didn't think about this the small details and it's de it's the little ones that make the big difference. Don't put your two by four on top of your two by six. So make sure you make that little U shaped notch for your two by four to sit in because what happens is like say this is the two by four and this is a two by six when you pull from the different ski tips it's pulling but if you uh if you turn your body it pulls from one side or the other so like i put the strap right across here or the the rope uh it's easy to lean into and everything like that but if you go like this real hard or like this real hard you're torquing it well if you do that and it's sitting on top it doesn't matter how many screws you have in the top of there it's trying to twist that board on top of the stationary board that's on your ski. So it's trying to twist it. And as strong as screws are, they twist and they snap. And I've watched it happen and I felt really bad because I've watched kids walk really far out and then have it break and then they gotta pick all their pieces up and stick it on top of their sled now and pull it, pull their sled back through whatever two feet of snow they decided to walk out in. And I know how that feels, I've done that plenty of times without a smitty sled uh, i did it for years without a smitty sled uh but i'm really happy i have a smitty sled now and i'm really hoping that some of you guys get a chance to build this thing uh it's real simple and then like i was saying i use deck screws um they are the heavily coated deck screws so they don't ever rust that is a really really big thing to keep in mind too and i didn't stress that enough hopefully you guys stayed long enough to this point that you understand that part uh, i wish i would have said it earlier but it's a big big thing those screws have to be a hundred percent weather proof not resistant like you can't have something that you can drag through the slush snow salt grime all that stuff and then have it rust because if it rusts then you're definitely going to break those screws uh but the notch with the screw is a really good joint and uh it's lasted me six years so there's no reason that it won't last you guys forever too so like i said i hope this makes life on the ice a little bit easier for you guys i've had a bunch of people over the years ask about my smitty sled and i just keep forgetting to do videos about it um but i just did a little walk through like i said hopefully that helps a lot of you guys out obviously if you're not new here you know what's up but if you are new can you please just remember to